It has been a couple days since I last posted, and since then, there have been a few new developments in the virtual reality sector. For starters, a few new patents were transferred over to Google recently, which may help them in their search for virtual reality content, as well as Microsoft maybe possibly intentionally or unintentionally collecting studios that have VR experience. And then we have a rumor that the Master Chief Collection may be coming to the PS4. Some full body tracking with a regular webcam and Bernie Sanders calling for video game developer unions. As always, timestamps and descriptions and links you can find in the description down below. By the looks of it, a player in the virtual reality gaming scene is going to get a little bigger. I'm speaking, of course, of Google. There were a few patents published recently that are going to be assigned to Google even though they were filed by another company. That company was Lytro, which went belly up last year and has since been purchased by Google. Those patents describe light field technology and angular sampling in such a way that you would be able to refocus images after the photo was taken, something that has been previously relegated to science fiction and action movies. Part of this would allow for capturing information about the direction of light as it arrives at the, at the sensor and being able to associate that with different depths, which is precisely how you would be able to refocus the images even after it was taken. So e even if, say, this picture behind me was, well, it, if it was closer or further away, it would, it would look a lot more blurry. But even after you were to zoom in and look at it, you would be able to see it at about the same depth and clarity that you currently are. Another one of them described correction of light field images in which the pixel values are corrected to remove flare. Like for example, this light right here in my glasses, you would be able to actually see the glasses themselves rather than the image that's present in them, or rather seeing the image itself rather than the glasses, if that makes sense. As a result, it could very easily improve a lot of the virtual reality projects that they have going on at the moment, like Cardboard, Daydream, or even Tilt Brush. They're major virtual reality projects. So chances are, we, because of the massive growth in virtual reality that we can expect over the next few years, we can likely expect Google to renew a lot of these patents. Since the debut of the PlayStation VR back in 2016, not only has it seen $2 billion in revenue with projected growth, but it can be seen as the only major console that has virtual reality content on it. That being said, on some level, you kind of have to start to wonder where is the Xbox's answer to the PlayStation VR? Well, it's very possible that we may be seeing it on Project Scarlet at some point down the line with that content being made with by their own in-house studios that they've acquired over the last few years. One of them, just a few just earlier this month, was Double Fine Productions. That one made Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin back in 2017 and launched on 2018 in PC VR headsets. Even their own 343 Industries, which at this point is credited with making most of the Halo games in the series, starting with Reach, made their own Halo game in virtual reality to, to try to throw the power of Windows Mixed Reality headsets in our faces. Ninja Theory made Senwa's Sacrifice in vi virtual reality on Oculus headsets and even made Star Wars Vader Immortal earlier this month. Well, not this month, but last month when the Oculus Quest launched. On top of that, we have Mojang, 
which launched a virtual reality version of Minecraft back in 2016. The Mage's Tale developer Inzile launched the launched the Mage's Tale back in 2018 and launched it on 2019 in PlayStation VR, as well as Compulsion Games, which launched Uncle Jack Live in VR back in 2018. So it's very possible that we may be seeing more VR content on Project, Project Scarlet through Windows Mixed Reality headsets over the next few years. But simply because they've backpedaled on VR content in the past, I wouldn't get your hopes up quite that much. Over the last few months, we've seen quite the big push from Microsoft and Xbox to launch their services outside of hardware limits. Like for example, when they launched Xbox Live and one of their console exclusives, Cuphead, onto the Switch back in March. Along those same lines, one thing we may be able to see, however it's just rumored, is Halo the Master Chief Collection on the PlayStation 5 or maybe even the PlayStation 4. However, that being said, it is just a rumor, and Frank O'Connor, the director of the Halo franchise, quickly shot down that rumor, saying that although there is talk about it, not even one line of code was even glanced at. So, even if it does come, it is way down the line. So, don't get your hopes up anytime soon. By the looks of it, the future of virtual reality tracking may be upon us very soon. In the subreddit, Windows MR, user Balmy includes a link to a video wherein some university students demonstrate successful full body tracking using a single RGB 30 frame per second standard webcam. Not only do they create a fully functional exoskeleton using the method that they describe in this video, but it is better than the, than the Xbox Kinect as well as most virtual reality tracking systems that we currently have on the market at the moment. However, as a part of this, of this demonstration, they also include the failures that are included. And in, as responses to this post, a couple of the users demonstrate or post suggestions that may end up getting rid of those flaws, such as secondary or tertiary cameras. So check all that down in the links down below. Hopefully this does seem like something that we could see included in future tracking systems whether it's for Windows Mixed Reality or Oculus Rift or future renditions of it or anything else when it comes to virtual reality. Finally, say what you will about Bernie Sanders and his politics, but in this case, I, I personally believe he's right on the money. Over the last few months, we've seen a few different stories about game developers working too hard and in some cases, working 100 hour work weeks. I don't know about you, but I, I appreciate my games. I'm willing to take, I'm willing to wait a little bit longer if it means I get a quality game. And I don't know about you, but personally, I work a little bit better if I get some sleep. And chances are these developers do too. One of the things he's calling for is a is game developers union, which would effectively allow them collective bargaining agreements rather than working as independent contractors the way they currently do. There are a couple groups that are intending to help him out in this case, such as the Alliance of the Theatrical Stage Employees and Game Workers Unite. And personally, I believe that as long as a quality product is is delivered, then it will deliver us happiness. But you do you, and I believe that's a good place for it.
if you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be going over what we know about the Oculus Connect conference. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.